Welcome to Open Forum from the NTA USA studios in Silver Spring, Maryland. Today's show, we have a great panel with us today talking about marriage, a forgotten commitment. You know, in the United States and other Western countries, people have become disenchanted with marriage. And you can't blame them. There's the divorce rates are going higher and higher. More and more people are choosing not to get married and just live together. And there are children who are growing up in many homes without two parents, so they've never known the institution of marriage as they've been raised throughout their life. So it's just not important to them. Today we have a panel of great leaders who will share, sh um, shed light on the topic of why marriage and alternatives, um, and are there any viable alternatives to marriage. From, first from my right we have Qasim Rashid. Qasim is the author of The Wrong Kind of Muslim and his new book Extremist. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Next we have Iman Noman Rana. Iman Noman Rana is in Zion, Illinois, uh, where, he, where he leads and he's also fluent in Spanish and travels the country uh, in leading for the Amdiya Muslim community around media works uh, as, well, as well as sharing, sharing um, Islamic uh, knowledge and, and information. Next we have Salam Bhatti. Salam is a practicing attorney in New York City and, and a, is an avid soccer player and is, I'd like to add that all three of our panelists are married. Um, Qasim has two boys, Imam Rana has, has a son and a daughter uh, and Salam was, was married about three years ago as well so hopefully you'll have ch children soon as well. God willing. So let's get started. Salam, we'll start with you. Why marriage? Um, people struggle with this topic. I mean, people have, like I said earlier, people have grown up in, 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 in households without dual parents. They just don't know any different. And, and they, they grow up, they see the divorce rate. It just doesn't make sense. Convince me otherwise. Well, it makes sense because, you, and you just said it in the, in the question, when you grow up in a single parent home or you grow up in a broken home, it's because the marriage didn't work or that there was never any marriage to begin with. And as a result, you have children who go into crime later in life, children who don't know how to treat other men or women in their life. So it's really important to inculcate this type of education within kids, whether it's through school or through the parents, that uh, teaches them that marriage is very important and responsibility is important as well. But the challenge, Kasim, I, I see in this is as a, an outsider, when someone's preparing to get married, they see the data. They see never having been raised in it. They see the divorce rates. They see all the challenges with it. Why, why go into that institution? Well, and I think we've talked about this before, that people think marriage is something that happens when you're older, uh, whether it's 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. The idea uh, behind why marriage is failing, it comes back to, and I've talked about this, that there's a lack of identity among the youth. There's a lack of personal ownership on what their responsibilities are, what should be involved in a marriage. And we can talk about some of the issues, multiple partners, unrealistic expectations, financial issues that lead to people deciding not to get married or to divorce in the first place. But I think to really root out what the problem is, it's not that people aren't deciding at 25, 30, 35 to not get married. It's that even in their youth, the concept of marriage isn't uh, demonstrated as being important in the first place. And if in their youth, so they're not that's understood. Happened. If that's happened, right. um, and, and they've been raised without the demonstration mm -hmm. of the importance of marriage, they, they've ra been raised in a single family mm -hmm. household, and they see other people in the divorce rate, they see the statistics, yeah. and it just doesn't make sense um, uh, to them. Yeah. Um, why should they enter into this contract? I think with what they're seeing in front of them, it's a very difficult proposition to make. It's mm -hmm. difficult to say, hey, the chances are you're going to be divorced, why don't you get married anyway? And, and so I can sympathize with them. So we have to go beyond just trying to convince them to get married, but help them understand why marriage is important. And when you look at any society, any functioning society, just like any organization, it is built on structure. Just like any company, uh, you're the CEO of a company. Without structure, your company falls apart. And society works the same way. What we found throughout history, throughout culture, throughout religion, is that societies function most effectively when you have that single core unit of marriage, of a father, a mother, united to raise children together. Great. I, I, uh, Imam Naman, so tell, tell me about society and, and what impact does a single, an individual's marriage have on the greater society? Now we're talking about why marriage and what effect does it have on the society. Now one, one marries for various reasons. The Quran says that you marry for peace of mind, for comfort, 
And if you're looking for that, you can build a very strong family unit. And that has an impact on, on the society. How? How does that impact society? How does my marriage with, in my unit, in my castle, if you will, with my children have an impact on greater society if I'm married or not? Right. See, if you're married, the, the, the habits that, you're, that your children are inculcating, they're learning from you, you're teaching them, and whatever they take from home, they take it outside. And they have an impact on other children, on the society at large. And that's the benefit of, uh, of strong family units and, uh, and people finding peace of, peace of mind and comfort in their homes and outside in the society. But, but how do you see the, um, in, in a society where there's a high, what, what would you notice difference if there was a society had a high divorce rate or a, low, or, or a high rate of, of married couples? What, what would you see different in that, in, in, in one of those societies that you wouldn't see in the other salam? I think you'll see a lot of uh, selfish behavior. Uh, when people don't study marriage as something great for the community and for society, as Imam Naman has uh, discussed, then people get lost in the individuality of it. You know, it's not just something that's great for you, but it's something that's great for the world as a whole because it's, it's micro units, you know? Every, you got the family, you got your neighborhood, you got your community, cities, towns. It all comes from that basic building block. The world is formed of basic building blocks. So we have to make sure that is strong to make the world strong. Great. Uh, Kassam, can, can, can you yeah, shed some I, more light I, I on think, that? I think, you know, going back to your question of why is it important for me to marry? Uh, why is it important for Imam Numan to marry? You know, there's two things we have to realize. We don't live in vacuums, meaning we don't live isolated to the exclusion of all other people. We interact. We have interactions. My children will need someone to marry, right? His children would need someone to marry. If my focus is marriage and his focus is not, who will my children marry, or, and vice versa. So I think this idea of, the, hey, I'm an individual, I don't affect anyone else, I think it's a fool's paradise, and it's contrary to the observable reality around us. Islam is a community faith. It, it seeks a community of, uh, the, the unity of mankind, unity of humanity. And as such, it teaches that you are your brother's keeper, you are your sister's keeper. And so in raising your children in a uh, structured family environment, not only are you assuring their protection and their self-identity, but when they go out and get married, and Imam, uh, Imam Naman's children are doing the same thing, then they can perpetuate that structured society as opposed to uh, shooting in the dark and hoping so it works out. So coming together um, uh, is more than just one person making a decision. Uh, if there was an isolated situation, we couldn't have people break off and do their own thing because we all impact each other. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. So Imam Naman, um, in, in terms of, you know, the Khalifa Islam has spoken on this, there's lots of challenges with marriage uh, as well. I mean, there's, there's, there's disagreements that, that, that get escalated sometimes. How, um, despite all that, um, what, what does the Khalifa of Islam say on marriage? See, first of all, marriage is not easy. It has uh, many bumps, and you have to, you have, you, you have to be patient. Uh, someone said that in, in a marriage, you have to be a leader and a follower. Sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. And Khalifa Islam is, uh, he, keeps on, he keeps on advising us that this is a family unit that, uh, that impacts yourself and the society at large. And you have to work hard to work things out. And uh, this will impact the children and then the following generations. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is very important that we, that we keep this family unit strong and uh, teach our children at the same time. And what are the distractions uh, from marriage? Um, so if one chooses not to get married, um, what are their options and why are those not viable options? One option that I've seen, I've, I've seen multiple options. One is um, I choose to live with a, a partner or one chooses to live with a partner. They don't get married. They live together for 10 years. They share everything, but they just don't sign the contract. Um, it seems to work because typically those individuals have, have gone through a marriage before and they just don't want to get into that again and they had a bad experience, but it seems to work for them. What is so wrong with that? Salam, uh, why don't we start with you? I think that the dating game has seeped into the married well, I'm life. I'm talking about more than dating. I'm talking about long-term, right. deep, uh, monogamous commitment. Exactly, and so the dating game is, is a temporary thing. You know, I can leave whenever I want. I don't have to make this commitment. So when you get into a married life, so if you've had 15, 20 partners, and then you get that one, so, you know, so, then so you don't have that I, commitment. I the, the reference you're referring to that most Americans have over 15 partners in a lifetime. Right, right. So then when you settle on one, 
you might get you might get fidgety, you might get cold feet, as the popular term is, you know. Uh, so when that happens, well, then then we're then we're all lost. Then we all hurt. But but but, tell, but I, I want to dig into if. I choose to stay with someone and commit to someone long term, but I just don't sign that contract, right. whether it be religious or government. What is so wrong with that? Because that seems it's seeming to become a more viable option for individuals. So something common law, as they would sure. say, you know, just sure. living together. Well, you know, if it works, it works, you know. But sometimes people need that public vow. They need to have their friends or two witnesses or whatever to make it a public thing. So can, can it work? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I would disagree. I, I don't think if it works, it works. I think what we're seeing is that it's not working. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, fewer and fewer people get, getting married. Uh, we're seeing an increase in abuse of women. Uh, we're seeing an increase of sexually transmitted infections and, and diseases of that sort. It's, it's not working. And children follow the lead of their parents uh, uh, in every way, shape, and form. The other day, I was just tapping on the table and I saw my five-year-old mimicking me tapping on the table in the exact same way. And so when children see that their parents are not willing to make that commitment to one another, professing to love one another but not willing to make that commitment to one another, and leaving their option open to leave at any time they want, then they will be raised in the environment thinking, hey, it's okay if I don't make that commitment. And the reality of life is this. Children rarely become more conservative than their parents. They typically become more liberal. So what's the next step after that? Who knows? But right now what we see in society is the, this concept of a hookup culture has developed among high what school and college culture? students. A hookup culture, very bluntly put, is uh, our youth are uh, being intimate for one night and then moving on to the next person. And this is becoming more and more aggressive so that the and level... why is that happening? Is this pure lust? It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's pure physical desire. It's simply the desire to be free and the desire to not have a commitment. And again, if you speak on an individual level, if you're only worried about yourself, somebody may not care about anyone else. But when we recognize that our society is not made of vacuums, we're not made of little cocoons in which we don't impact one another, but we very dramatically affect one another, we realize that this is not a sustainable business model. You cannot build a society uh, off of this. And the harmful effects that you're seeing are the rising rape cases, are the rising cases of sexually transmitted diseases, the rising level of abuse of women. And uh, I think Salam uh, mentioned it earlier, but when you have single family homes, statistically speaking, across race, color, religion, you find higher rates of drug abuse, higher rates of violence among youth, and lower uh, grades and test scores. Got it, but, but Imam Iman, come back to this challenge where uh, Salam said it works and works, and Qasim disagreed. Can you give, give us your perspective on this. There's lots of individuals moving towards this gray area of they live together, they don't, they don't cheat, they just live together for years on end, 10, 15, 20 years, but they just don't get married. Right. So some people prefer this, that they just don't want to get married, they don't want the, uh, the ceremony, they don't want anyone to know, they just live together and they're happy. But if, you're, if, you, if you fail to commit yourself to that relationship, to dedicate yourself for that person, then of course uh, the, the, the way uh, uh, you are as a husband or a father, that would be different as well. That would, uh, that would affect uh, the way you are with your children because what you, have not, you have not committed yourself to that, to that relationship. So there's something to being committed where it, which demonstrates other, uh, other values as well? Right. Uh, just, just, just the way one person would be towards his wife. If he's not committed, if he's not uh, uh, dedicated to that person, he can get up and leave any time. And that would, uh, that would affect the relationship between the, the husband and wife. And if they have children, that would affect the relationship with the ch children as well. Because uh, once again, he, he can get up and leave any time, right? So this is what marriage would do, uh, that would, uh, that would uh, bond the family together, that would bond the husband and wife together and make it a strong family unit. It seems like there's, there, there's something to the commitment um, of signing the, or reciting the vows of marriage that a lot, that, that if you choose not to show that level of commitment, you will not show commitment in other parts of your life. Um, what do you think about that argument? It depends also what the studies show. Do the vows that I say in court, do those seven lines but the really hold up? vows as well. You know, I mean, various religions are covered. See, I, I think it's a vicious cycle, and this is the point that I'm going to, that if we go with that mentality, you're going to have children who take that liberal mentality and become more liberal. You see, Islam has a very uh, uh, beautiful system of marriage where it allows the individual the freedom, the complete freedom, to choose their life partner. But once they make that choice, they go in there with the fear of God in their heart and that commitment. 
that through thick and thin I will be with you and we will find a way to make things work. And even then Islam says if things truly don't work, though God hates the concept of divorce, He still permits it. So that availability is still there, but it requires children going in with that understanding that this is a lifelong commitment made in the eyes of God because I respect this individual on more than just a physical level. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, so marriage is important, and you, you, you can't just choose to live together. You can't do a lot of these other things. Now, now if marriage is so important, let, let's, let's go with seemingly off topic, but let, let's tackle it from this context, is gay marriage. Now, now it, these laws are becoming more and more prevalent in the United States and other places around the world as well, where, where states in the, uh, in the U.S. at least are allowing for gay marriage to happen, um, and it's, it's being seen as a civil rights issue, it's been seen as marriage is actually positive for all the good reasons you should allow individuals to marry, if the, even if they, they're going to marry someone of the same sex. Um, now the, the, the traditional marriage would say that a marriage is really between a man and a woman and this leads to ills in society. So let's, let's go, go back to the ills in society. What, what is the challenge of gay marriage? And uh, Imam Rana, would you like to start with that? Yes. Um, see, religion in, in general, not only Islam, but other religions have also spoken about homosexuality. And it's, uh, the, the, the impact that it has on the society uh, is well known. Uh, and that's why uh, all religions uh, have, uh, are, are against uh, homosexuality. And of course, therefore, and marriages. And why are they against? I mean, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Most the major religions are are clearly against the concept of homosexuality. Why is that? What impact does that have on society? See, the family, the fam, getting back to the family unit, that's made up of a man and a woman, and that's this. This has, this is, something that's natural. It's from God. Uh, God Almighty, and uh, of course we. Well, some, some would say that's a traditional definition. Why can't uh, why can't you have other definitions? And well, what, why why and so to my question to you is why would God set that rule between a man and a woman? What impact? What benefit is that to society? The benefit to that, like I said before, uh, it's, it's it's the family unit. It's getting back to the to the to the basics, uh, building a family with the children, uh, nourishing them, and that's why a man and a woman are best fit for that uh, for that relationship. Would you agree? I would agree. I would agree because uh, and a man and a woman will create that family. In a same-sex marriage, you can't create that family. You have to rely on adoptions or uh, adoptions, really, to, to, to make a family. And the purpose of marriage, one of the primary purposes of marriage, one would argue, is, is, um, is to procreate. Kasim, is that true? It's, it's procreation, absolutely. And, and I think there's a lot of uh, rhetoric that flies around the concept of gay marriage and uh, people will try to position you into two camps. One, if you're pro-gay mar gay marriage, you're painted as this person who is godless, liberal, who has no morals. If you oppose gay marriage, you're painted as a self-righteous bigot who has no regard for others. And Islam takes a middle path. Islam has a defined level of sexual behavior and is based not off of uh, the, the sole concept of pleasure, but on the utility behind it. And as Imam uh, Noman and Salam pointed out, that a heterosexual marriage, uh, by definition, garners the ability to procreate and advance the species. And Islam's argument, which is a utilitarian argument, which means that whatever is best for society, the individual should infuse in himself, is just that. So really when it comes down to it, the idea of marriage in Islam between a man and a woman is ultimately designed for that reason. So t tell me the downside of, of gay marriage, if you will, or, or, or homosexual um, companionship. You know, there, there's a number of things, and you could fill an entire episode with it, but I'll start with just this very basic one, that this concept of, of a utilitarian perspective, and it's a big word, and so I want to define yeah. that. What, what it basically means is Islam teaches that whatever is good for society, the individual should adopt. Even if the individual himself doesn't harm anyone else, Islam rejects that concept. So the idea, and again, this is taking it to the extent, when you compare heterosexual marriage, if everybody in society engaged in heterosexual marriage, there's no harm done to society. If everybody in society engaged in gay marriage, it would be the end of society. So what Islam says is that because on a broad level it would be harmful to society, the individual should uh, shun it as well. Some states are allowing it, some states are not allowing it. And the states that aren't allowing it are doing the smart thing because when you want to allow for a, a right like this, it has to be in the state's best interests to allow for it. 
but homosexual relationships and marriages rather are not in the state's best interest Why not? because it's not going to result in anything there's it's not going to continue the state the state has laws about heterosexual marriage because it will continue the state it will continue its citizenry but home wow. yeah that's very interesting that, that, that's that, that's an, that's an interesting analysis now now um, this, this um, the, the relating it back to marriage right so so we're saying that gay marriage for state laws and and other places may not be in the best interest of the state but from a societal perspective as well it seems like there's higher rates uh, there's health risks to it there, there's lots of challenges um, challenges to the notion but if they're born that way what are they supposed to do well, well I think that's an assumption and I, I, I don't know if there's scientific evidence to back that up. Uh, at least I haven't read anything. You know, Islam teaches that uh, every person has their own struggle, their own jihad, which, w w the, through which they must overcome. And I want to use this analogy very carefully because it is a very stark analogy and it can, it, it can come off as vicious, but when understood in the right context, there's scientific evidence that people are born more prone to alcoholism that people are born, uh, born more prone to violence. But as a society, we've decided to reject that just because you're more, uh, born more prone to it, we're not going to excuse your alcoholism. We're not going to excuse your violence. The difference here with gay marriage or homosexuality is because there's an assumption that if a person is gay, they're not hurting any other person. The reason why Islam rejects that argument is back to what I said earlier. Islam, Islam is a community religion. It talks about the greater good of the society. And from a procreation perspective, because Islam teaches that marriage, the fundamental purpose of marriage is to advance the species, something not possible through a homosexual relationship, therefore Islam rejects that argument. There's no doubt that people are born with different tendencies uh, to a greater or lesser degree. But to relegate that, to say that this is the only thing that I'm tied to, the only thing I'm able to do, I think is contrary to, to what uh, genetics has shown us and contrary to what uh, uh, humanity has shown us throughout history. So, so that's a very deep and very, very precise point. So thank you for sharing that, Imam Naman. Um, around this point, um, this, this whole idea of I'm born this way, did you, do, you, do you agree? First of all, do you agree with this uh, assertion? Well, what Qasim said, that it, uh, there, there are no studies that show exactly that that is true or not. But uh, even, e even if it is, uh, what we are, uh, what what we would be uh, saying is that uh, even if someone is born with uh, certain tendencies and uh, they have certain urges, uh, the best way to do is uh, is, is to uh, be steadfast and patient during this th during this trial. That's what we would say that this would be a, a trial for a person, and we would expect that uh, he's uh, he would pray during this uh, this time and uh, uh, try to fight off these these tendencies and, and these urges. So some some would argue that that they're prone towards pedophilia, so therefore they should be allowed to be pedophiles. Is, is this the same argument that you're prone? prone towards certain behaviors and you, you need to have the restraint and self-control um, because this is this is not good for society and it's not good um, good for various other reasons which we mentioned earlier is, is that is that is that the gist of the argument in fact regarding pedophilia that's actually just been recently classified as a mental illness so now people can use it as a defense uh, in court uh, and get away essentially get away with it. I'm sure they'll have to go to a mental health facility to uh, make up for it but it's it's a, it's a mental thing now. And Qasim brought up a great point, that we're all genetically prone for certain things. So even if it is, even if you are born with it, you know, everyone has their own jihad, everyone has their own struggle. And we have to do whatever it takes for the greater good, for society to advance. Sure. So, you know, so w w one thing I want to really point out here is that Islam's standard of marriage and sexual behavior is based on human psyche is based on what will ultimately ensure the propagation of our species. The concept of marriage and acceptable sexual behavior in society is not a consistent standard. It changes over time. You know, in some of my research and studies, uh, in some of my writings where I've discussed, you know, you brought up pedophilia, uh, people forget that even in the United States, 40 years ago, child pornography was considered legal free speech. It was considered legal free speech, and possession, even in, uh, up until the 80s, was considered legal free speech, until we finally realized that, hey, this is actually harmful to children. So the first 200-some years of American history, this was considered legal, part of free uh, speech, protected behavior, and then it was illegalized. So the, the point that I'm trying to bring up is that society today has decided that this is behavior that we want. 
Islam didn't suddenly become immoral. The, the challenge to show that Islam is immoral is to demonstrate that Islam's teaching of marriage between a man and a woman is somehow destructive to society. And I don't think they'll show that because then you have to argue that human history has been destructive for so many years. Wow, fascinating point. Let me, let me switch to more, more uh, speaking of Islam. Islam allows for, for polygamy or up to four marriages. And, and in the American society, that's not seen very positively. Um, where, where the Islamic argument, um, a, as I've heard it, the gist of it is that while in America you can, you can sleep with as many people as you want, you can have children with as many people as you want, but you can't commit to more than one person, which, which seems like, seems like um, um, a strange law. Um, um, and now, what do you think about that? How, how, how does America understand this? Is it, um, now it's not for, is it for everyone? So should everyone have multiple mar uh, wives? What, what is Islam promoting here? So, Salam, would you like to start? Uh, some people have trouble with just having one spouse. Uh, so, uh, you know, four. We're from, we're from the full length, from, from not getting married to having m multiple wives. Exactly. And we're, we're, we're filling the full spectrum here. That's right, that's right. Uh, Imam Rana will speak to the Islamic points on polygamy. Uh, for the, the legal points, uh, it's, it's in, we're, very, we're in a very interesting point in, in history right now because gay marriage is being legalized uh, in America. This is a point where polygamy might be re-legalized. What are the benefits of polygamy, just, just from a religious perspective, before we go into the implementation in society? See, Islam uh, wants to safeguard the society. And that's the reason why there are, uh, there's allowance of, uh, uh, of more than one, one, one wife. And of course, uh, there are conditions that are attached with this, uh, with this, with this teaching, with this uh, teaching of the Holy Quran, uh, that even if uh, you decide uh, that you want to marry more than one wife, uh, even if there is need in the society that uh, that uh, a man should marry more than one wife, of course, there are conditions. Uh, you should be able to do justice with the, with, with the, if you have more than one wife, and if you if you think if one thinks. Uh, he can fulfill these uh, these uh, these conditions and be just with the, with all of them, and then he should take this step. But uh, at the end of the day, if if someone is married, uh, I don't think he should he he would be thinking about it's, a it's, second. Uh, it's not a rule right. to have multiple wives. Right. Uh, it allows for the options. Right. Um, what can you add to this? Right. So that's the first thing to point out that polygamy is a permission in certain situations. It's by no means a commandment. Uh, that you must go out and marry more than one wife. Uh, the second thing to point out is that this is not new in Islam. Islam didn't come to establish polygamy, it actually came to limit it. Past cultures and religions had no limit on the number of wives you could marry. Islam limited it to four in certain conditions. Uh, the why is it so looked down upon in this society where people sleep with over 15 partners? We've cited right. research, we've seen all the data. Why is it not accepted in America? And, and I think that's one of the hypocrisies we see in our society that, uh, you know, we all went to high school uh, and college here, and the idea of a guy who was with a different girl every night was considered prestigious or honorable, even though it's a disgusting behavior. Uh, but suddenly you slap the label of, I will be accountable to this person, and now it's considered immoral, which is mind-boggling. So I don't know why it's considered um, uh, wrong or why there's taboo on it, but I think from a perspective, again, from the Islamic utilitarian perspective, when there are situations where this is merited, uh, uh, there's no harm to society, and as long as there's consenting adults, there can actually be immense benefit. So, so real quick, rapid fire, um, how do you exp uh, explain the the benefits of marriage to the youth in America today. We'll start with you, Salam. You let them know that it's a positive addition to society, that it will advance society, it'll make them better neighbors, it'll make them better people. And they actually live longer and healthier because of it too. Go ahead. Well, if you want moral support, you want peace of mind, you want comfort at home, you want a partner that you can uh, enjoy your happiness, share your, uh, share your moments of happiness with, marriage is the way to go. That's right. It comes down to personal identity and the identity of your children. If you want to institute a level of confidence and identity in your children, whether male or female, marriage is the way to go. Raise them with that commitment as an important forefront of who they are, and they'll perpetuate that as they grow older. Great. 
Thank you. Thank you for uh, being on the panel. And so we've, we've talked about the importance of marriage, the value of marriage. Actually, there's lots of great research that marriage allows individuals to live longer, live healthier, and, and support society. And there's a great benefit to society. So there's, we discuss many benefits of marriage. And we discussed many alternatives, alternatives such as such as not being married and living together. We did not find that viable. We, we looked at gay marriage, and we did not find that um, viable in this context. And we looked at polygamy, and we did find that viable. And why that's not allowed. It was a broad-ranging show. I, I hope it was informative and it allows uh, our viewers to understand that marriage is something that we can we can all be all be proud of. Marriage is something that that we can all support and and share with children from, from a young age throughout their lifetime because it will benefit them. Thank you for being with us on Open Forum from the MTA USA Studios in Silver Spring, Maryland. Thank you very much.